Hi there guys. In this video I'd like to talk a little bit about a condition called incipient case head separation. Now that's kind of a fancy sounding term and it mostly applies to rifle ammunition or rifle cartridge cases although I suppose it could uh, occur with pistol cartridges as well. But uh, let's break that down a little bit. What is incipient? Well incipient means about to happen or uh, impending and of course uh, case head separation is a fairly basic uh, concept. We have a cartridge case head here and we have the body of the case above that and a case head separation is when the two part company basically you get a weakening of the brass in this area and the cartridge case uh, is separated into two pieces. Now mostly this is not uh, a traumatic event usually it occurs upon extraction however there is a risk of it occurring during firing and the resulting a discharge of gases into the breech area of the gun which could damage the firearm and or the shooter. Obviously something that you want to avoid. Now what we're looking at here is a 303 British cartridge case and uh, which I just dropped and 303 British is especially prone to this condition and there's a few reasons for that. The main one being the uh, rather sloppy nature of most 303 chambers as opposed to the dimensions of the, uh, the ammunition and the dimensions of sizing dies and also the relative springiness of Lee Enfield actions, most 303s being Lee Enfields, that springiness of the action tends to uh, add to this problem. So I've got a couple of examples of cases to show you here. Here's one. These are old cartridge cases as you can, sell, you can see, the 1945. This is a World War II production Canadian case, DI Defense Industries and that one's been reloaded a few times and it's doesn't really show any particular signs of uh, stress at this point in time. And I've got a bunch of other ones which I, which I separated out from uh, the ammo I was loading and they are all showing signs of incipient case head separations. Now we're going to get this up really close and hope that the camera obliges by focusing. I'm going to grab a pointer here to point out what you need to look for. You can see in this case, this cartridge case here, we have, I can carefully point it out, there is a light colored line which runs, if we get the light right, it runs pretty much all the way around the cartridge case. You see that line? And it's, it's this line here, not this line. This is the solid case head here. Then we have the transition to the, uh, where the case head is not solid. And it's above that that you'll see the, uh, the signs of a, a case head separation. There's a real good indication right there. You can see that that line there, that rather light line. And this is a cartridge case which is just about to let go. In fact, it's kind of a, uh, surprising that none of these actually pulled apart when I fired them this time around. Now in fairness to these cases, they had been loaded a lot of times and I think they were full length sized a few times as well. And that is a, you know, a surefire way to make these things fail, especially in a Lee Enfield. Looking at a good case here, out of the same uh, manufacturer. If we look at it, we can see there's a little bit of a bulge here. There's a solid case head to there, and this is where the internal volume of the case starts inside. You'll see a bulge where the case is swelled out to fit the chamber, but you won't see that that uh, ring that runs all the way around. So there's there's a bunch more of these here, and they all show that ring. You can see there's a closer I get, the easier it is to point out. There's the ring running right around there. Now, I've got a real high-tech uh, tool to help me out here with this. This is basically, well, it's a piece of coat hanger that's been bent to a 90 degree angle and ground to a relatively sharp point. If we take a cartridge case which is not failing and we run this tool down inside the case and try to and kind of grab at the edge, you can see that uh, if I pull it out here, this is kind of a by feel thing too, but if you pull it up the side of the case with the hook towards the case, it slides smoothly up. It doesn't catch because there's no ring inside there from the case separating. If we take one of these cases which is in the process of failing, once again you can see that there's a, a light colored line there right around the case. If we take our tool and insert it into the case and pull it up, it actually it actually grabs. You can you can probably hear it grabbing there. You can feel this if you have um, a case like this in front of you. 
and you can feel that ridge in there. So this is a good thing to keep your eyes open for in brass that's been loaded a lot of times. Once again, especially in the uh, Lee Enfield action, the 303 British, it's much more likely to happen. Uh, there's a reason why they make stuck cartridge case removers for these things. I've had them, I've had the cases pull apart while I was out of the range, and it can be a little bit of a bugger to get the front part of the case out of the chamber. So it's just better to keep an eye on, on your brass and cull it when it gets, you know, to this stage. It's now scrap brass, and uh, you know, get rid of it before it becomes a real issue. You can uh, you can alleviate this problem for the most part by neck sizing only, or using the uh, the collet style size dies like Lee Precision offers. They don't work the cartridge body at all; they just work the neck, and that will basically eliminate this problem for the most part. There is going to be a little bit of stretching because of the, the springiness of the uh, Lee Enfield action, but for the most part, um, if you neck size, you won't have that much of a problem. Those cases which are in the process of failing, those ones I believe were, were full length sized a couple of times and I think that's what contributed to their uh, to their premature failure. Um, I'm going to get a Dremel tool and a cutoff wheel and we're going to cut apart one of those cases which uh, is about to fail just so you can see what the inside looks like. Alright, i got a Dremel tool here and we've got a cutoff wheel for it, an abrasive cutoff wheel. So we're going to try to section this case head so we can see what's going on inside there, just to demonstrate uh, what's the issue inside the car cartridge case. Well, I did section up that uh, 303 cartridge case. Cut a little uh, window into it, I get the camera to focus. Cut a little window into it to uh, give you a look at the interior and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Right above the pointer there you'll see there's a little bit of a, a bump in the brass and that's that ring that runs all the way around. You can see it also on the bottom, there's that bump again. But it, it doesn't really show up all that well when you section the case this way. It occurred to me that I do have a better example of a case head separation, so I looked around in my uh, my stuff, and I have a couple of cases which I sectioned out a few years ago just to illustrate this particular phenomena. And this is a 7.62x54 rimmed case. We get the camera to focus here. There we have a, I believe it's a Norma brand case. And there we have the cartridge case from the outside, and we have a sectioned one. The section of it, and you can see all the guts of the cartridge case, primer pocket, rim, solid case head, the remains of the flash hole, and the sidewall body. And this is a good. This was a good case that I kind of sacrificed. You can see that there there aren't any issues along the wall of the case here. Everything's pretty much the way it should be. So that's what a good case looks like if you cut it in half and clean it all up and kind of makes a good illustration of what it should look like. And then, to show you what it shouldn't look like, we've got we have another cartridge case here. The camera to focus. This is also a Norma case. And if we look at it, it's immediately apparent that this case was about to fail. Now, right right there, you can see the depression and actually on the inside of the brass you can see this entire this entire area here it's all pulled and basically this is because the case is is stretching and it has to has to give somewheres so because the pressure is holding the cartridge case to the side of the chamber walls and the thrust is pushing back on the case head and the case head because it it doesn't expand because there's not enough pressure to expand the case head down here it pushes back till it stops against the breech face and essentially what this does is this stretches the brass out and it basically draws it and it's going to draw it at the point of uh, sort of the least resistance is immediately above the solid case head so it, it gets thinned out here by being pulled back and drawn. So you can see what's going on inside there. With our sharp tool you can see how we can feel that ridge when we're inspecting our cases even though we can't look inside the case we can feel it with that sharp tool. So anyway that's a, a fairly good uh, Fairly good way to show you what a case head, incipient case head separation 
uh, looks like. So hopefully you'll be able to spot that when you're doing your reloading and call those cases out and uh, not have any problems with your gun and your ammunition and you know keep yourself safe. Anyway, thanks for watching guys.